That sure is a soft piece of music. Don't worry, we'll change that in a little bit. But I'm just waking up. <laughs> All right. I'll say hello here in a little bit, <clears throat> and we'll get started. And yes, I'm in my uh, FM voice today. Oh, my gosh. Ah, oh, I needed that tea. about another 30 seconds of this music here to let folks sign on and just uh, get on the page. I'll say hello and then we'll start off today. Saturday morning, uh, September the 16th. And uh, yeah, I think it's time to uh, be creative. It's showtime. I do need this piece of paper though. Let me just take a piece out. Way deep voice. Yeah, I'm in my, I said I'm in my radio voice today. Bill Randall, 650, Dorothy S. Mound, the Axel White and Peppermint Enders Company, Bachelor Company, home of the Grand Old Conglomeration, Fanny Hill University, and the Bathtub of the South. It's nine o'clock. <laughs> yes, I had a radio show way back then. It was the informal, informative, incisive, incandescent, incomparable, indescribable, but humble little radio show. Hey, I'm Michael. Great to have you on the show this today. It's showtime. Uh, the grandkids call me Rue. You can do the same. I paint watercolor roosters. I think you know that by now, right? Do you realize how long I've been doing this show? And I love it every time I'm here. As a matter of fact, I've been, uh, I've been here most Saturdays. Mondays, um, I am in a process right now of some busyness that I love there's busyness that just takes you away from everything. There's busyness that is your creative wheelhouse and you love, but it also takes you out of some of the um, planned pieces that I've been moving towards. So let's just get started here. Let me say hello to some of you. So glad you're here. Thanks for signing on already. <clears throat> and uh, I think what I want to do is just give my voice another few sips. I'm going to take you to the kitchen sink video just for about a minute and a half here while I uh, take another sip of this tea. Uh, get my nose all squared away, and then we'll go from there, okay? Here it is. Uh, if you haven't done this, read the instructions. You know, I paint this about three or four times a year. And why do I why do I paint this? I paint it because it allows me to not just be in my studio, which is just an office upstairs in my house that has a beautiful barley, barley uh, is it barley twist table leg oak table from way back, way, way, way back, hundreds of years ago. Uh, from England, found it up in uh, Fosco, uh, North Carolina, many, many years ago. And um, I use it, to, it's, it's got these two leaves that drop out, but really it's just covered and you hardly can't see the wood. But sometimes I'm away from this and I just grab whatever I have handy and I make a painting and I call it the kitchen sink. Several of you have one. And um, here's, here's a little video just to give me a, another second here. Boom. So there you go. Uh, just a little thing. If you haven't tried that sometime, just grab whatever you have and start to paint something. I don't care what it is that you sketch or draw. Maybe it could be a landscape. And you think, well, I don't want my landscape to look too um, psychedelic. And you go like, you know, have you been to California? Those people who live in California know if you go down to um, uh, <clears throat> where the Sawdust Trail is, 
um, fly to John Wayne Airport and just drive a little ways out. And I'm telling you, there are some of the most beautiful oranges and greens and purples and rust colored, sand colored, um, paints gray mountains that I've ever seen in my life. And some are, are brush painted, some are knife painted. It's just amazing. And so throw the kitchen sink at it every now and then and come up with something that may stretch you out from your little box. Now, I'm not talking about the size of paintings. I'm not talking about that at all. And I'm going to sneeze a couple times today. So just bear with me if you would. There we go. Three of them out of the way. I have, uh, it's happening again. I'm back on, uh, back on the road a little bit. Uh, and so, uh, just had a busy, busy week. And so I've also got some snizzles, snozzles, whatever you call them. So anyway, my point was, let me say hello. And then, uh, we're going to jump on this right away. I got a couple things to tell you about, show you about. I was in Greenville all day yesterday. I wasn't planning on that trip, but my daughter is doing an art show there today. And I'm going to explain more about that show and show you a photo um, uh, it's called the Indie Craft Parade. It's in Greenville, South Carolina. It's at Furman University. And so it's in there where the Paladins play basketball. All these craftsmen have come in there together. And when I say craftsmen, I'm talking high end. This is a jury show. So everybody there has some unbelievable skills. And, uh, so my daughter and her husband had a little bit of uh, car trouble before they started yesterday. Just the battery said, I quit. And so while they were getting that changed, they were going like, uh-oh, we got to drive down here and have this thing ready to go at six o'clock. The doors open last night. And so I went, Carol and I looked at each other and I went, I, I got to go. So I just uh, backed my dump truck up against the, the house. <laughs> I don't have one, but metaphorically, so that nothing would dump out while I was gone. And I jumped in a car, drove two hours just, just to do what dads do. And uh, uh, so I came home, got home late last night, had a late bite of dinner and went to bed and woke up with this. But uh, it's great. They're off and running this morning. Alice Durham, good morning to you. Karen Binder, Bender, Cinder, Denise Albright. I know you've been to the Sawdust Trail many times. You live right in that area. Lori Stanley Handelmeyer Henderson, great to have you on the show. Karen Marie Pikert, another Californian. Yippee, I oh, Gene Jimerson and Thalzer, Jason Nicholas, man. Hey, I appreciate the photo you shot t uh, this week of the Rube Goldberg contraption uh, in your architectural class. It makes me proud, makes me smile, though, more than anything. It's not a bad kind of proud. It's a fun proud to think kids are seeing this going like, you know, this guy's not right with himself, right? You go, yeah, you know, that's right. All right, uh, Evelyn Davis Morales, thanks for being on the show. Donna Cell Barton. Uh, the Rube Goldberg painter from way back, <laughs> Linda Schleitning from beautiful Ohio. Um, and let's see, June Jones, always love to have you on the show. Stephen Dockery, uh, the bird is on, on today, <laughs> the man who paints birds. Barbara Freeman, thanks for being on the show. Uh, Elaine Barrett. Uh Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, that is the one you own. You own that one. I just shut the video of it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Maggie uh, Carnahan uh, from Culpepper. It's, that's a lot of C's right there. Okay. Culpepper. Uh, let's see. Janelle Cochran. Thanks for being on. Carolyn Childs. Heather Kuhlman. Sue Kane from all the way across the ocean. Uh, the pond, as we call it. Um, Bob Hendrick from the magic, the magically misty Minnesota, where they don't drink soda, they drink pop. Yes. Uh, Werner's ginger ale is the ginger ale that you get ready to drink. And as soon as you're ready to take a sip, it goes up your nose. And you go, ah, maybe I need some of that this morning. The little Werner's, the, the bubbles go up and you go, ah, what was that? The ginger burns your throat. It, it's a, uh, it is powerful, strong stuff. I love it. Um, all right, here we go. And they call Bob 33. Yes, of course you do. Laura Belushi, thanks for being on the show. Sandy Rongish. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right because I always see your name and I want to think it's Rongish, but it doesn't have a W in it. That's just wrong. Okay. So Danny Parker, good morning to you, my dear friend. <laughs> my phone joining you on occasion. I always love to see my friend Danny Parker. I thought uh, I think of him every now and then when one of my boys, uh, who we didn't even I didn't even have sons back when uh, you and I were throwing a frisbee around, 
And uh, Danny, we helped create Frisbee Disc Golf, just so you know. You can share the story. The organization, Disc Golf Organization, um, didn't even come into being until three years after we were already playing it and setting up courses at camp. So I consider Dave Fry, you, Lee Scruggs, myself, uh, I consider all of us a part of that initial thing. We just didn't get the creative credit for disc golf, but we were playing it. I helped set out the Frontier course, uh, the Silver Cliff course with Alec Woodhull. It goes on and on and on. So you can add that to your story. Hey, wait a minute. It wasn't even organized until the 76 or 7. So just so you know, <laughs> I figured it out. Andy uh, McBean, Jack Wolfenbarger, blessings to you, my dear friend. Bert Crone, Bert, um, just right in Greenville. I was there yesterday where my daughter is today. Um, she's at uh, on the Furman campus in an art show. Kendra Williams. All right, so here we go. Uh, Pop in Kansas as well. Oh, P P oh, you call it Pop in Kansas, Sandy? I didn't know that. So I didn't know you call it Pop out there too. You guys, uh, I wouldn't. I would change the name of it so I wouldn't call it Pop like they do in Minnesota. Hey, here's uh, here's a couple things here. You know, I do these uh, sometimes on Saturdays. It's showtime. Sometimes on Saturdays, I do these. Uh, watercolor pieces with liquid ink. And I'd usually do a big brew and I just uh, add a lot of water. Uh, and I sketch something really fast. And uh, what happens is this. Um, I just let it go where it wants to go. I realized in all the roosters that I've done like that, I sort of have my style of what I drop. But I haven't done any bees like this and it may not even work. But this week I'm going to this coming week, I'm going to Greenville again on Thursday, midday, uh, a little after midday. I'm showing up at David's table. Some of you know well, and you've helped them over the years. I'm going down there, and I'm actually doing an art class with uh, the friends at David's table. It's a, a ministry that works with uh, disability folks. They have assistants who come in and help them paint. They do what they call an art <laughs> class, and there's emphasis on the because the young lady who says it, says it like that. And so they've just put two exclamation points. It's the art and it's on Thursday. So I'm going to uh, go there and preempt their normal art class by just popping in um, and uh, and surprising them with something. And I think I'm going to do things that fly. And so I just need a little practice today here because I, I've, I've been doing little bees. I'm, I'm up to 1,000 and 45 today. So this B will be 46, I believe it is. And this book here, I'm still holding. This is, uh, this is the, the 20, the last 20 B's that took me into, well, I'll be, this is the last 20 B's that took me into, um, uh, 1000. So, uh, be bold. You can do it. There's 980 right there. There's 981. So I'm going to paint one of these this morning. Maybe this one. That's I'm going to pick one of these out. And I'm going to do it in a large piece, and I'm going to do it with my watercolor. And these are PH Martins, and I'm just going to really kind of get messy with it because I think that's how I'm going to paint with these folks down there. And I think in their style and how they're getting helped by people because some of them don't have control of their hands like we do. One would think that people look at me and they go, "I don't think you have control of too much." And so, but. Um, it's really fun for them to express themselves in art, and they love it, or art. <laughs> and so uh, to my dear friends at David's Table, they just had a retreat this year. Uh, so awesome. So here's a Picasso. Uh, here's, ooh, I may have to do two. I may have to do one like this, too. This is called Tough Day. And uh, these are these are fun little bees that I've done. Um, bee lines. There's, there's one that's from Down Under. Suke, this is from you, from one of us, 16 from Down Under. <laughs> That's B990. Uh, uh, there's 991, B90. This is um, was a tiny, this is a repeat of a tiny one I did playing spoons. Somebody bought this painting. I did it back in uh, July. Uh, bringing, bringing home the pollen. Uh, here's one, whole still. That'd be a good one too to do. So I may do one, I may do two of these. I don't know. And then it goes on. So I, don't, I think I'm going to wind up selling this entire, and the Jew bug sneaked in there. I think I'm going to wind up selling this entire little book uh, that's 20 bees. And then I did this tiny little guy. Look at him. He's kind of cute. And uh, he's he's more like some of you guys do where you, you're very detailed with your little bee parts. 
So I just going to get a little ragged here and say, I think I'm just going to do something like, uh, this is a little, this was a B in tribute to, uh, uh, a friend, uh, heading to heaven, <laughs> lost a friend. And so, um, uh, this one's pretty cool too. This is free flying. So one of these I'm just going to do. So here it goes. All right. Quit talking about it. Do it. Need a little B music. I don't have, I, I really don't have, um, the flight of the bumblebee queued up, but it's okay. I don't need it. So here we go. Skeeter pal. It was so good to be at camp David. Hey, you're on the show. Great buddy. Um, hopefully we'll see you this next Thursday. <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm coming down and uh, to do a little painting with the art group. <laughs> All right. All right. Here we go. A little music. And uh, I'm going to use these paints. So you know what I'm using. I don't want to get ahead of you because this is kind of a workshop live that I do. But I've got other things to tell you today. I'm going to be using PH, Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydras. Uh, this stuff is about, I don't know, 9 or $10 a bottle. So it's not the, the least expensive tool in the shed here but what it does is that it, it, these last for a long long time and i really do love them i don't have a green i don't think i need it because i have this blue and and uh, uh yellow that run together and make such a rich luscious green that i kind of like that so i'm going to use the three primaries mainly but i will toss in a little bit of white and maybe just a touch of what i call carbon black and maybe that's what they call it yes carbon black okay so there we go. No inks in this. This is uh, Hydrus liquid watercolor. And uh, you've seen me paint roosters with this lots of times. Got a little shadow in here today more than I normally do. The studio lights bouncing off the ceiling or something. Okay, here we go. Um, uh, la, 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 la. Here we go. All right. Let's try one of these. It looks like he's a, he's a little bit of a bumblebee. I'm going to try and do something just like this. You know, I don't even know why I'm looking at this. Who cares? <laughs> I think I want him flying that way. So here we go. I'm going to sketch him with an 07 just so he'll be bold and bright. So here we go. A little music and boom. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take here. I think his wings aren't even going to fit on this page, are they? No, not a chance. All right, that's good. He's oh, he's overflown his welcome anyway, so. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. like this bee. I'm going to do one for them. I think that's about this big. So that'll give you an idea. So it's a little tough for me to show you that one on camera today. I'm not even going to worry about these inside legs. I might turn them up this way, but I might bring them on out here and I'll do some more detail on these legs in a little bit. But right now I just want to see what's going to happen if I throw some color at this. And let's do this with a bamboo brush uh, and maybe a zero. Ah, come on. Let's just do maybe a number two. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put, I'm going to take an 05, and we'll put a little detail in the wings like this. Bring it out here, bring in some curves like this, and then maybe here, just, you know, not not too much. I don't want to get too carried away uh, because of, uh, I don't want it to be all about um, a reckless style. Here we go. So this is the, Let's see, let's do uh, this in black. Let's do this in black. Let's do some black in here. And then let's do, um, let's do a little black down the legs like this. And I'll finish these legs up by watching this. Okay, so I'm just painting with water right now. So you really shouldn't be able to see too much of what I'm doing. Um, let's drop a little carbon in there and just watch what it does. Boop, see it didn't do anything. All right, let's do a little piece right there, a little piece right there there and uh and then so if we just get it to move a little bit yeah just follow the water okay so that's gonna be good all right i like that see how it's just sort of running out here and following the water so i'm really just touching the brush i'm not painting strokes i'm just doing this right here all right here's why i'm doing that is because i want the bu the bee to be fuzzy <laughs> 
So if I put it in like this, the bee tends to fuzz up just a little better. And I kind of like that. I've never done this with a honeybee before, but I thought, why, why can't you do this with anything? Sometimes we get so meticulously and we get tight. We want to grab our brush like this and we want to get into the work like this. And we go like, ah, and you realize here's, here's how you know if you're in trouble. Look at your hand. If you look at your hand and you see a, a place in here that looks like a furrow in a cornfield, Bob, your old corn farmer, if you look and you see it looks like you plowed your finger and there's a divot in it or a row where you could plant cucumbers, that'd be a hill, but you, you, you suddenly go, I think I'm squeezing my brush a little bit tight. It'd be on this middle finger. You go like, I'm going to get that paint in there if it takes all day. Instead of just holding your brush like like this and just having fun with it. Da, 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 da. And so just direct the traffic from way out here. I think it's gonna be fun if you do that. All right, so I love that already. That's kind of wild. I'm gonna clean that brush out. I'm gonna go get a little bit of yellow and I'm gonna do this one more time. Now here I'm gonna control the water just a little bit more because I want some water here but I don't want all that black in there. So watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a little piece of paper towel and I'm gonna make myself a block. Watch this. Just rip a little piece off and I'm gonna go right here and I'm just gonna dry this edge of it right there like this and here and then there and there, there maybe. If it doesn't work, I don't care. Okay, now I'm gonna put a little more of that touch of water right in here, right there. Then I'm going to drop a little yellow right there like that. Ah, I love that. Look at that. That's just too cool. And I'm going to put a little bit of yellow right up here. And I'm also going to add a little bit of, uh, I want a little orange right here. So I'm just going to put a touch of red right in there too. And just let that run into wherever it wants to go for the time. I'm going to pull back on that. That's too much red. So I found that out right away. So I'm going to get some of that out of there. No, 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 and no. Okay. Now, a little more yellow. I think I got plenty of yellow here. A little less water this time. I'm gonna pick up a smaller bamboo brush. And, and I didn't practice this before I came online. So if you think, oh, he's done 20 of these, I haven't. It's okay. Doesn't matter, okay. The only color I think I'm gonna have to add this morning or mix outside this is a little bit of, let's see. I need a little bit of blue. Let's see if I can get some right here in blue. Let's see if I can get a little bit of yellow. I think you can see I'm mixing here in a uh, little glass bean. All right, a little yellow blue. Just that can get a little bit of green here. Not, not enough green yet. More yellow. Now I got some green. Now let's put a little touch of red in that. See if I can get a little bit of just a touch of brown. Red's pretty powerful, so you got to be careful with that. All right. I like where this bee's going. Uh, no pun intended. Okay. Oh, I think I got myself a little bit of brown here. So watch this. I'm just going to barely touch this brush in this color right here and see if I can swing some of this out. Look at that. That's kind of a cool orange brown, isn't it? Whoops, went the wrong wing. All right, so let's come in here with this piece right here. I just like a little bit of out on the wings where they get transparent out there. I like a little bit of that. And then what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to go in here with a bigger brush and grab some of this. Uh, ink if it's still alive a little bit. Let's see if I can catch some seven here and just let it let it roll in a little bit like this. Um, and then come in and while that's still on this piece of 140 pound, this is Kilimanjaro paper. It's 100% rag cotton. And uh, you know, without me even saying it, but I'll say it anyway, it's my favorite paper. I love the way water rolls on it. I love the way that it grips the color and all those undulations, those little mogul feels if you're a skier. I just love it so much. This is a cool bee, by the way. Dang, I like it. Um, now, I think what I want to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to come in here and steal some black from his bum. This is what makes him a bum bull bee. And I'm just going to put a little more of this detail here. Once again, I'm just holding my brush real loose. And I'm not trying to really make sure that I color in all the lines. This is not paint by number, people. This is like paint when you don't have numbers. This is like paint when you didn't learn how to count. 
All right, and then I'm just pushing it out to make it uh, some some pile, some fuzz on the side of him, just like that. That is too cool. I'm into it so far. And then I'm just going to come in here and come in and put a little bit of this I'm lightly, as I as much as these clubs for hands can. I'm pulling this brush so lightly through here. It has a little bit of black ink in it, and it's going to run into this color and just drift to the outside, and it's going to give me the look of the back of this bee and a little bit here. I want this membrane to be a little stronger where it comes off the bee's back right there. So I'm just going to push in just like this, and then I'm going to come in here and just circle this around a little bit right here. I'm picking up a little bit of the yellow which I like around the eyes and the head, lightens that up a little bit. And so I have this, uh, uh, so there you go. Paint my numbers and probably has taken your shoes off in case the numbers get past 10. <laughs> but I wear boots, so I never take them off. Cowboy sleeps in his boots. You never know when rustlers might come into the corral. So, um, Anyway, that's to give you a little idea of how you can just sort of rough shot a little B into, into place. Now, I'm going to give it just a second there, and I'm going to show you something else I'm going to add to this. I'm going to pull out, let's just go with the old tried and true and tested Lamy pen and pull in here and just grab a little bit of detail from that pen. And look, I'm causing some of this black to run into this, um, into the yellow portions here. And then I'm just actually doing a little more finer detail in these uh, with ink. And I'm rolling that in. I just like these piles on the back of the bee's back. I know he has a, he comes, his back humps up just a little bit. And uh, if you haven't uh, brought a honeybee in to look at him recently, you've got him for a few more months until the cold weather says, hey, I'm out of here like a herd of turtles. I'm really liking this bee though. Dang. I might do this more often and I want a little more yellow right here. It just didn't get enough and I'm not happy with it yet. And I want a little more right there. Uh, remember this is, and by the way, this, uh, this shouldn't surprise you, right? So for the colors, let, let me just tell you what the colors are. Here they are. What size is that? Uh, what size is that B? That B is nine by 12 inches. That's the piece of paper I'm painting on this morning. Nine by 12. Okay. So there you go. Nine by 12. Uh, all right. And I, I know that because, well, I got it out of this piece of nine by 12 Kilimanjaro paper. Here it is right here. 140 pound original bright white watercolor. It's hundred percent pure rag cotton. Um, and it's Joe Miller approved. <laughs> and now it's approved from heaven even. Joe has uh, left the planet, folks. And uh, those of you who haven't heard, uh, he lived a long life here. He was 84, 85 years old. And time to go on home. And uh, anyway, miss him already. Just going to grab a little touch of white and just put a drop right there. And you go, what did you just do? I'll show you in just a second. I'm going to just let that kind of go out a little bit and just lose it. I wanted, this, I wanted this head area to be just a tad lighter and gray. And I'm going to take a little bit of that brown and bring it right in on top of that, just like that. A little more of a brown head up there, just to lighten that up. Bee, bumblebees especially, this is more of a kind of a honeybee mix, but bumblebees can have a little touch of gray on their backside. And I really do like that sometimes. So I'm just kind of getting creative now. That may be too much and I'll go back and add a little dark over it especially back here on his bum, but they have a little white spot in them. Uh, and I didn't like what I did there. I just let that roll right into my yellow. Notice the yellow had dried some, so that's cool. I'm going to go back in and just add a little more on top. Just a not even a dro dropper full. Please, when you're using this stuff, you can always go back. You can take some ink out or paint out, but it's hard. So always just kind of go in and, and uh, enjoy... Uh, adding some and then adding some more and go from from that so anyway that'll give you a little idea so a little more fuzz coming out here and then i'm going to come back in with my pen and just do a little bit of this pile up here like this remember i haven't done this before on a bee this size so this is kind of new for me too but i pretend like nothing's new for me i'm just like that's the way it's supposed to look you see you got to have confidence if you're going to be a watercolor painter you just got to throw it out there and people go how did you do that and you know what your first response is i don't know 
if you couldn't read my lips, I don't know. It just happened. They go, sure, it just happened. Oh yeah, no, no, it really just, it really just happened. It really just, it really just kind of went there and happened. So uh, now I'm going to take this my brush, this big old brush. Look right here on this leg. I'm going to take this little bit and just put a little bit of. Here I am using that light touch again, just barely touching this to just put some detail on the legs. Get that other leg going up and under the leg here, coming out this one, coming out this way, going up this way. I think I need a little bit of orange, and I'm going to cheat. Uh, there's no such thing as cheating, but I'm going to go over here in my orange palette. See it right here? I'm going to go here. I'm going to grab a clean brush. I'm going to grab some of this um, pumpkin orange right here, um, and I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, pollen on both the front legs and the back legs, just like that right there, and just maybe a shot right in here where he's just got... And then I think I'm just going to do some beauty spots of a little pollen all over him here on his wing. So he's been in the flower. And then I think I'm going to grab a little bit of, uh, of my blue. Let's see if I can't grab a little blue somewhere right here. Let me put a drop right there. There's a little bit of ultramarine. By the way, what I was going to say, I don't know if I did. This is gamboge. Why would I use the same colors as colors in here? Here's why. I know them. I've painted with them for years, and I know those three colors and how they mix. That's a little bit of the inside that I know. So I'm not working with an Indian summer, or I'm not working with a lemon yellow. I'm not working with a sun yellow. I'm not working with a bumblebee yellow. It might work well. I just know how my gamboge uh, blends with other colors. And so this one's kind of running a little bit. I'm going to clean this up in just a second. I need it to dry just a little bit. This is Gamboge. This is Ultramarine Blue, which uh, the Hahn family, that's me, the Rue family, calls this uh, French Blue, Ultramarine Blue. This is Cad Red. Um, Cad Red is the closest that I have found. Is this brilliant Cad Red. And it's, it's uh, the closest that I've found to come out to Red Hot Mama and Joe's uh, red kind of mixed together. This is just a carbon black and this is titanium white. So those are the colors if you want to know what they are. Here's the thing. You're going to spend five, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40. You're going to spend 50 bucks on this paint, but I'm going to tell you, I, I could probably do 200 of these bees with the, I could do more than that. So it, you don't waste it. Don't pour it out. Just drop it somewhere. This is why I love painting on my paper as a palette and not mixing it somewhere then losing all of that. You know, I lose a lot of ink when I put, this is ink. I use a lot of ink. I was practicing some bamboo this morning. I thought I was going to be watching Karen paint bamboo on, uh, on, on the Yasutoma show yesterday, but I went to Greenville and, and missed that. So I was actually practicing my bamboo. I'll show you a couple pieces I practiced on. It was kind of fun. All right. So once again, titanium white, uh, carbon black, brilliant cad red, ultramarine blue, and gamboge, which is a, a, a bright yellow. So those are the colors that I used. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in for one last drop here in the paper towel. I'm going to go back for one more, one last cleanup right here on aisle three. I'm going to go in and watch. I'm going to, so I got, I got a little carried away. So I'm going to come back in. I'm going to clean this up. So here we go. A little yellow right here. Just let it settle in. I'm going to take my brush and just help it a little bit and thin it out so it doesn't run so much. There it is. I like that color there. I like him because he's sort of kind of reckless. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of black and come back in. And I'm going to cover this black right there. I had some black I dropped out in that little dish so I don't have to open it up again and drop one in there and get too much. And then... Um, so there's there's my honeybee this morning. I like him. I like the orange that's pulled out here. I like this. I was going to go for some blue, and I dropped a little bit of my blue in here. I'm going to touch the brush, and then I'm going to come in from way up high, about six or eight inches up, and I'm just going to splatter a little bit of blue sky in this bee, and then I'll sign it in a little bit when it dries. So there's my first big old bee. I need to get him laying on something flat. Let's see if I can find something flat enough to scoot him off on. I've got this piece of foam core here, um, and I'm just going to slide him right off on this. Like that, there it is, and I'm going to lay him in the floor, and I'll come back in a little bit and do a little more detail, maybe. I'll maybe clean this line up right across here that probably needs to be cleaned up a little bit, and then right across here. But remember, 
Bees have hair. It's called pile. So there it is. So I'm going to pile him over there in the floor. Dang, I like that bee. Just slipped into one there. All right. Hey, let me show you a couple things here. Um, he needs some honeycomb. Oh, okay. Let's do some honeycomb. <laughs> Uh, Laura says he needs some honeycomb and she's a suggester. I always see that on the show and I have some, look, I have some honeycomb right here. All right. So let's just put a little honeycomb right here on this bee. Boom. Let's just put it right there. Let's put it that way. I was thinking he was coming from the flower. So maybe he's going to the honeycomb. So we'll put it, put it this way right here. All right. So watch this. I'm just going to come in and grab a little bit of, uh, I need a brush. Let's see. Let's just grab this brush right here. And, uh, um, let's just grab this brush right here and a little bit of that gamboge and just sort of wipe it in. It had some yellow in it. I wish I had had that in there, but it did. All right. I don't know if this is going to work or not, so we'll just splatter it in here and see if we get a little bit of a break. And I don't normally stencil like this. I normally chase inside the blocks, but I didn't feel like that today. So, um, uh, so I'll probably dob it out like this and I'll come back once it's dry and I'll put a little trace over that. All right. So there we go. And yeah, I had some honeycomb hanging up there. I did a project that required, um, oh my gosh, I don't know how many sheets of that honeycomb metal that I'd use on the back of a, a yellow thing for magnets to stick to for a client. All right. So here we go. Let me show you something. Um, uh, yes, uh, this week, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> Yasutoma show. Yes. Uh, Yasutoma, uh, sometimes, uh, it's actually, I don't know what it's called. Some of you guys can find it. Uh, she does a craft show and, uh, Karen is the artist. Karen, of course, does a beautiful job of demonstrating all sorts of, uh, Karen and I have met online a couple of times and I did a piece for them one time. And then when I worked some, uh, a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago with Yasutoma in, uh, in Orlando, uh, their own lines. Many of you are their guests, and it's really fun that that uh, they started doing the show. Um, and in fact, I encourage them to get online and start pushing it out there because they do great Asian products. And what I mean by that is, I get Sumi ink from them. My Japanese brushes all come from Yasutoma. I get them through Joe Miller now, or Cheap Joe's Art Stuff, simply because uh, that's the quickest way to get them shipped here. And uh, and yes, I have more than most people. Uh, I have this grouping of them. There they are hanging from, you see me hanging in front of me over here on the camera. And then you see them hanging in front of the art down there below. Look at this. These are all Yasutoma brushes. Some of my favorites. And by the way, I hang them up by those little loops on the back so that the hair, which is mostly deer or rabbit or, um, squirrel, this is mostly goat actually. And so then in my, in my jar of brushes here, I have just a ton. All these you see like this are all Yasutoma brushes. Um, and they are, they're one of the companies that I think they do such a grand job by how they attach the hair to the brush. Here's one that hasn't even been opened yet. When you get them, this is starched stiff. Uh, you got to practice with them. You just can't assume that, uh, it's going to be great. This is a pretty easy thing to do if you haven't uh, done it yet. And I'll be happy just to show you how real quickly, how I do it. Karen, she's a master at it. Um, and so I don't, I don't have a call for a lot of this. Uh oh, what did I do with my brush? Here it is right here. I don't have a real call for, for me doing this. It's just a good skill. If I go somewhere and I'm maybe leading an art class and somebody's saying, Hey, have you ever painted bamboo? And I go, not well, but I'll show you how. So I just take a little bit of ink. Um, and I dropped some of this Sumi ink in this thing. Uh, late last night or early this morning. And so for me, I'll just go get some and I'll touch my brush in it like this, a damp brush. And, and I don't want too much, but I probably have too much on this already. And then I just lay my brush down. And this is probably how Karen teaches. I didn't see the show yesterday. I lay my brush down like this. And then I just start to slide it up like this and I stop. And then I lay it down again. And then I go up and I lay it down again. And this is building the sections of the bamboo. And I'll lay it down again. And so I have these sections made. And you see those little hot spots? Those are really great to have when you're painting bamboo. So, um, so I'm going to take it again and just go up. And then I'm going to stop and go up. And so the brush really does the work. I don't have to worry about doing anything. And then I'll go get some, 
some of the bolder, uh, thicker, and I'll just come in and I'll do a little spot across here that just really darkens that up. This is the advantage of, of uh, ink. What you don't want to do is do what I just did there. You don't want to really go back. Do it in one brush stroke and be done with it. I don't know how I got into this. I wasn't going to do this. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but just go in there and just put a little piece in and watch what happens. Get, 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 get to some bold ink. Ooh, I just picked up a little blue. That should be kind of fun. And, I'll, and uh, then I'm going to grab a smaller brush and watch this. I'm going to come in with my smaller brush, and I'm just going to come in and do some little um, twigs coming out like this. And then this is a, a zero or a number one brush works really well for this. But watch what, to make the leaves, you literally do this. Look, you lay the brush down like this, and then you just pick it up. Ta-da! Okay, you lay the brush down, and just let it flan out, and then you just pick it up. So look, I can go doop, doop, doop. And there's my leaf. Three, one, two, three. I, I'm upside down on that, so I shouldn't have been, but it was. One, two, three. Some of you do this really well, and so that'll just give you an idea of, oh, and you want to see how I got some color in this? Look, I just took my little brush and rolled it in here like this and while it was still damp wash it out a little bit i just come in with a little bit of color because the bamboo that we grow here in is not all black of course the whole concept of black and white ink in the japanese culture is just fabulous fabulous that just gives you a little idea i, did, I wasn't going to do a demonstration on that today but i was practicing for the show yesterday not that i was on the show i was just going to watch her paint it and go oh that's how she does it um, anyway, uh, you can find that show online. I think if you look up Yasutomo on Facebook, so tell them Rue says, Hey, would you do that? Say, Hey, Rue says, Hey, they are great friends. Let me show you something here. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Renee, I think that's a good idea, but I don't think you understand the band, the, the steel that I'm using. It doesn't work that way. There's not enough to hold paint, but that's a good idea. Yes. Uh, all the above has been tried. Usually what I do is I just trace it out a little bit and hit a little touch in between. Cause remember, I'm not really trying to make honeycomb. I just thought of maybe getting some real honeycomb and stamping it, but then it looks too rehearsed and practiced like the bees make it. I want mine to be really loose. So I have a reason for how I do things. And some of you have some great suggestions and believe me in 15 years, I've probably tried it. And so uh, I'm not resistant to it. Thank you for sending it. We'll go from there. All right. So I want to show you this real quickly, though. Uh, this week, what made my life rushed uh, in a great way was that um, Thursday night, I had uh, I had Monday, Tuesday. I was really busy on some script writing and stuff. I've got a client that I've picked up to do some serious video work for. And I'll be sharing some of that. But uh, I had 30 guys coming to my house for dinner on Tuesday. Uh, Thursday night. And so I decided to do, you know, the best hot dog in the world, which to me is a Clements dog shipped out of Chicago. And then we set up a hot dog bar. And so Carol said, well, I said, would you make your delicious potato salad? She said, yes, before she took off, she had to leave and do some uh, grandkid duty. And, uh, and then my granddaughter was here with her and they made this corn, black bean, she picked corn, black bean, uh, feta cheese avocado dip that's just unbelievable with lime chips and then they also made a big thing of salsa so i had like two gallons of each for these guys and they cleaned the house but i bought 60 of these giant hot dogs and so just to have a little fun with them um, i built a, a hickory fire outside and i was going to cook them all that way but i showed them I showed several of them how I was going to set this up and go, hey, it's going to take a little while to do dinner tonight. So just get comfortable chatting with each other, learn who each other. A lot of these guys had not met each other before. 30 guys, 29 guys showed up. And uh, so I wanted to show you what I did the uh, what I did the hot dogs on. You ready? All right, here we go. Wait a minute. Let me get rid of that. And let's go to here. This is it. I did this. I built this in 2017. All of my art is not watercolor art. Some of my art is just zany. And I get in the welding shop and I take something that was something and I turn it into something else. So I have a big smoker, but I also have just a round kettle grill that I build a hickory fire and put a grate down over it. And uh, anyway, here we go. This is called the BBQ.
You shouldn't have to fire up the entire grill to just cook one hot dog for lunch. So I created the pocket grill. I call it the BB Cutie. There you have it from Story Riddle. Mmm, <clears throat> perfection. All right, so there it is right there. So, huh? <laughs> and you may not see it come on at first, but it's called the BB Cutie. Watch it one more time. You'll be. You shouldn't have to fire up the entire grill to just cook one hot dog for lunch. So, I created the pocket grill. I call it the BB Cutie. There you have it from Story Riddle. Mmm, <clears throat> perfection. All right, so there you go. That's uh, that's it. Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Here it is. Here it is in its actual size. Look at this. So what's funny is when these guys, you say, hey, I've got 60 hot dogs here. And you go like, hey, this is going to take a while. So just make yourself comfortable. And you open it up. And it just holds one hot dog at a time. But it actually has a wood fire piece in it. So I made this out of a little propane can. I need to tell you, as a disclaimer, do not weld the propane can. Uh, without uh, taking the little valve out first and fill it with soapy water and then cutting it because uh, they will explode. So you got to know what you're doing in the welding business. But uh, here it is. Just made this in the shop and it literally, the smoke comes out. It just cooks fantastic. But it takes about three or four minutes to cook one hot dog or five minutes maybe if it's depending on how hot it is. Plus, I got to chop up some pretty small wood to go down in the cooking part here. Anyway, it's been a fun, it's a fun thing to sit on the counter and go, uh, dinner's going to take a while. Now, I literally lay them out 12 at a time across my grill, take a paint stick and put it on them and roll them all at once. I want you to see this just because I have fun with these guys. And they go, what did they all say? I want one of those. And I go, you can't pay me enough to make two of these. <laughs> this is a one-off right here. So it's the BB Cutie. I call it the pocket grill. And um, there it is. I want you to see that today. And uh, that'd be a fun thing to just say, he ain't right with himself. And we all know that. All right. So that's my barbecue. <laughs> Ah, I'm gonna. I, I am gonna build one for my boys for Christmas. So they all need one in their house because they all have men who come to their houses. And they all cook for them, and it's just it's it's a great community. You know, women are so good at community and getting together and having teas and and dinners and outings. And, and men, they go like, oh, I don't know, I don't have any friends. And and so I'm I'm like I'm done with that stuff. And so. You, you throw a dinner and these guys come over and you go, what are you going to do? And you go, hey, we're going to go out in the backyard and throw tomahawks or we're going to do something or we're going to blacksmith something or we're going to make something or we're going to cook hot dogs and I'm going to show you how to make a, the perfect steak like a cowboy. And so uh, my boys do that um, and they're cast iron and all this stuff, but they need a barbecue, a BB cutie, uh, my pocket grill. So I want you to see that today. And then I want to show you one more thing today while I'm on. I was at the art show yesterday and let me see if I can get to... Uh, Aaron's True Cotton. Is this the picture right here? Nope, it's not. So let me see if I can get it located. Hold on one second. I got to find this photo for you and throw it back up on the screen. Boom. Not now. Where is it? There it is, I think. Coming up. Maybe not. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. So this was the booth that I left last night to drive home back to Charlotte. And uh, if you see um, these flowers that are painted overhead here, uh, on the backdrop, if you're looking straight ahead, are all hand painted and blown up, and that hangs there. Off to behind Andy, there are some blankets. She has these printed blankets. These are all prints, and a lot of these prints that you see, the eight by tens, the five by sevens, are are prints from a new book, and I have to show you that over here on the left. There's some printed ware. There's glasses. This is just one booth. This thing has about um, seventy five. Are artists, craftsmen from all over the Southeast who come together in Greenville to be a part of uh, the Indie Craft Parade. It's, it's a big event. It's just absolutely. Yes, I could market those hot dog grills, but uh, the price on them would be outrageous because it takes a long time to build one. I have to split. It's like I could build a large grill in the time it takes me to build that one. <laughs> Mickey, thank you. <laughs> uh, but I got to show you something. If you look over on the, uh, Linda got your book. Oh my gosh. So Linda already has her book. Thank you. 
there's there's a book over on the left shelf. If you see the first shelf on the left, there's a little book there, and I want to show it to you in person. It comes in hardback and paper. Is this a commercial for my daughter's book? Yeah, doggone right it is. I mean, it's my daughter whose art is just superseded Carol and I's art and just most people that I know. This is called A Hundred Days of Tiny Truth. She started this, and, and here's what I'm going to say. And I'm going to dig into this a little deeper on uh, my uh, Patreon course because I'm going to talk about sticking to something for 100 days. You remember I started Roo Doodles doing 100 days at a time, 100, or 100 days at one time. I just said every day for 100 days I want to paint something. She chose about, uh, about 18 months ago to, to paint 100 days, a tiny truth. So for her, that's a tiny truth out of the Bible. But she chose something and she painted it. And so this is the logo she created. And then it was about day 28 or 30, somewhere in there, that she was selling the painting every day. The paintings are four by six, about this big. And then they're hand-stitched onto another piece of paper. And then she started scanning and photographing those. And then about day 28, she thought, I need to make this into a book. This is work that I love, and I bet other people might really find uh, lovely and useful. So remember, art needs to connect to people. This is the prime teaching way to say art connects to people. The, then how do you up your connect game? You say, here's the thought. Here's the thought. Not, not I'm going to dump everything that I know on you. Get in there and practice. I'm saying I did that B today with this color because, not because I didn't have anything else to do, because I never really tried it. And I don't mind failing in front of you saying, well, that didn't work worth a flop. Let's change it again. But I think I'm going to like it when I go and look at it and see it over here in a minute and put some more. And I'll do a little more highlight comb and we'll, I'll throw it out there on the auction today. We'll see if somebody likes it. It's a big B. It's this big. Put the big B on the back of your bathroom door. All right, so look at this. Tiny truce. So she got into it. She wrote this. Uh, her husband's transition in jobs, who is a, uh, is more degrees than uh, than the temperature and uh, is a good writer. And, and uh, she said, how would you like to write these tiny little paragraph devotions and then leave this as a Bible journal or a journal for people? And so... Here's what happens. So there's a little sweet life, sweet like honey for the day and for the evening and all these little, oh, I'm sorry. You're, I'm so, I'm such a loser. I'm showing you the book and I'm not even on it. I apologize a million times. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here's the book. Good grief. Here's the book right here. So there's the little tiny pair of words. So she started painting these tiny pieces that are only this big, stitching them on. And so here's what it looks like. There's a little icon that says, sweet like honey for the day, for the evening. And then you get into the photographs. And these photographs, by the way, in this book are pretty spectacular. And this is over her paint palette. So here's what she's painted. All these are all originals on hand done paper. And then there's a little piece at the top and a place for you to write. This is the hardback. They make them in, but take a look. It's a hundred originals, which are already sold, but she is making a limited run of prints of these. And that's what's in her shop in Greenville today. And you can get those online. But as you see, here's what you get to work through. And so I ordered, and she's got to sign mine. I ordered, when it went, when it came online available, I ordered the first copy. And, and she said, Dad, I would have given you and Mom a copy. And I go, no, you don't understand. I, I'm buying the first one. And so this is the first one off the press. And uh, so I got it. Because dads are supposed to do that. Moms and dads are supposed to do that. So here is what it looks like. The work is just spectacular. So um, you want to talk about art that connects to people, that speaks to people, that helps people connect to other people. This is it. Now, for some of you, you know who I am and you know what I deal with. And part of me is my faith, but I'm just telling you, if you're going to do any art, make sure your art connects. As I walked through the indie craft last night, I can see the artist in about five minutes. This was before guests came in. I can see who connects and who does not connect. It's just real easy because I've been doing this so long. It's not that I'm a good artist or a great artist. I just still think like an artist. And I'll look at other people and I'll go, you know, if you just move that to there. And, and it's sometimes in her, 
Her area looks real busy until you realize there's only two walls that are displaying product. The rest of the time is for people to talk and mingle and move around. And so it's not busy. And then there's stickers and then there's five by sevens and then there's nine by twelves. There's eight by tens and then there's a whole sales stack of stuff, which all artists should do. She says, these prints are $5. I've had them for years. They just need to go. And so, I mean, she has hundreds and hundreds of pieces of artwork. And so this is kind of just, this, this is her palette. So sometimes she'll do a break like this for you. Every seven days, there's a break for you to just take a note and say, stop today and reflect on what stood out to you. So uh, it's a hundred days of tiny truth. This is the hardback. You can find it at True Cotton or you can find it on her site. Just go to truecotton.com and it'll pop up. She's an Etsy shop uh, and, uh, but uh, you can buy these books from her. Uh, you can also get them on Amazon. Uh, it's out there. So with all her other books. And so anyway, I just want you to see it today. I'm so proud of this. And I'm telling you, it is absolutely gorgeous. And this is the hardback version. And uh, Carol and I, I'm going to keep the hardback version. We're going to get a, a, a paperback to write in. But I want to keep this one just for it's the first one. And we're going to have it marked that way. We'll probably wind up writing in it too. I write in everything, and I think you should. All right, so I threw it in the floor. <laughs> That's my pitch on my daughter's book. Her her art is off the chain, um, and so uh, can't look into your camera zone. Yeah, Gene, I just figured that out. <laughs> All right, hey, here's the B. Let's put him back over there and finish him up here in the few minutes that I have left this morning. Dang, I like him so far. Okay. Uh, let's, let's go in here. Let me show you how I do this. Sometimes I'll just put this back in now. Watch this. I'll take this and I'll put it right here like this. Okay. Right there. And then let me just grab a little pencil and I'll just go in here like this. Look at this. This is kind of the cool way that I get to do it right here. This little honeycomb steel, um, is pretty remarkable. As a matter of fact, um, you know what? I should make some of this available to you guys so you don't have to pay I might can do that. I might can figure out a way to get a piece shipped to you for a little bit. It's pretty expensive when you have to go buy the whole piece. Um, there, that gives you a little idea of what that looks like when it's done. So I'm going to give you a, sh a little piece on showing you how the other piece is done here. If I just go in here like this. And I'm just taking a number two pencil. This is a uh, Black Murado and just putting a few pieces here and letting it dingle out. I don't want it to be too uh, symmetrical. I just want it to be kind of loose. And so I'm gonna come in here and put a piece there, put a piece here. And so I have this little piece, you kind of run it down like that. And then I'm just gonna grab uh, my brush here with a little gamboge and I'm just gonna go in between on this one and I'm gonna change how that one, that one looks. I'm just hitting it like this. And then I'm just going to do a sweep across there like so. And so now I have the two different styles that you can see how that looks. I'm, I'm loose. I don't want to be precise. I just want to be, I just want to give you as the artist a little theater. Does that make sense? I just want you to see how I've created a little touch of theater with the, with the honeycomb. And so there it is. So that gives you a little idea. Uh, uh, Roodoodles. This will be number 1046. Woo -hoo -hoo. Um, be about life. All right, there he is right there. Yeah, I'm going to grab that. Uh, Grab this pen, come in here, and put just a little bit in, in my last few pieces here, kind of like so. All right. Okay, this B is off the grid. I get it. <laughs> so he's nine by twelve. Uh, there he is. I'll throw him out there today. Uh, he's a good looking honeybee, even if I did say so myself. Let me show you what he looks like by holding him up in front of me here. Let me just go to my desk shot. Where is that? Do I have even a shot? Heads up. There it is right there. There I am. This will give you how big he is across my nice hair. Who does your hair? 
Okay, here, um, like this. There. Ta-da! So, look at that. That's a pretty big B. I like him. I like him a lot. All right. Hey, it's uh, uh, about to hang it up here for the day. And um, <clears throat> I'll have to think about this. There might be a way. Some of you could probably find this no, in plastic. No, it's probably cheaper than it is me trying to get a piece of that ship to you. Yeah. So, uh, Amy B. Weaver, thank you. I like the B in your last name. So, there you go. Uh, beautiful. <laughs> uh, gosh, you guys are too much. Hey, listen, uh, I hope you're being creative. Uh, I don't know how you are. I don't know what you're doing. Uh, I talked to some interesting potters yesterday. I talked to uh, a jewelry maker that I really like her stuff. Her name is, Jan well, she goes, her shop name is January. And uh, it's, my daughter wears some of her jewelry. And uh, anyway, it's, it's just fun to see people who make things uh, to share and how that really does shed light and hope and, and love and gifts. And just, it's just awesome. I, I love it so much. And I hope I don't ever grow out of it, loving it just to stop and look at what other people make. Uh, so don't wait until you have everything lined up and that you feel like you've polished the rock and now you can do something. Start making mistakes now. Trust me. Just blow into it. I had no idea how this bee would turn out. No idea. I'd never done these close quarters like this where I wanted them separated. I was afraid that I might uh, get too tight in here and get too wild. And, and, and so I didn't know exactly what was going to happen when I came back in here. And so I want a little more orange right there, though, because I do believe that there's some orange on those bees. I love that so much. All right. And I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. And I think I still need a little bit more of this blue to just bounce it down with my other pencil right here. Just a little more blue out here on the wing tips and in there like that. And I think that's going to do it for the day before I get too busy. I'm out of here like a herd of turtles. Uh, ciao for now, Tissy says. Blessings to you, Tissy. And good to be with you guys. I am out of here like a herd of turtles. <laughs>